let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. My Alaska by Nancy Lee tells the story of Alaska during its glory days. An adventure from the get-go, it contains Nancy's earliest memories of Alaska and the 1964 9.2 Good Friday earthquake. Her stories are inspirational and heartfelt, humorous and gripping, all true stories, all from the perspective of a true Alaska native, giving readers a good taste of the Alaskan life as it was in the 80s. This is her first book. Nancy grew up in early Alaska and, as an adult, raised her family while obtaining her liberal arts degree at the University of Alaska. Being an emergency medical technician with Teketna Ambulance Service in Alaska for many years, Nancy fell in love with medicine and became a registered nurse. Moving to Grand Junction, Colorado with her children, she earned her Bachelor of Science nursing degree from Mesa State College, also a licensed pilot, certified scuba diver, an entrepreneur, lifestyle expert, loyal advocate for women, and author of My Alaska. Nancy Lee is our guest on This Week in America. Hi, Nancy. Welcome to the program. Hey, thanks, Rick. Looking forward to this, all that you've done. I've never been to Alaska. It looks like a beautiful place and somewhere I would really like to visit, except in, in the middle of winter sometime, maybe in the in the <laughs> spring when you got some daylight up there and you can actually see all of the beauty. I love what yeah. you've done with this. I love the story that you tell in, in my Alaska. How did this book come about? Why, when did you decide, I'm going to write about uh, the good days, the fun days I had in Alaska? Well, I lived through such crazy things. There were stories that I just wanted to preserve because they were just either too funny or too um, bizarre or too uh, crazy. And I um, just wanted to save them. Um, I, I didn't want to write a book necessarily, but I wanted to save what I had been through because it was just so unique. Yeah, I mentioned funny. There are funny stories in there. There are serious stories. There are uh, uh, flights with death that you had, and we'll talk about those during the course of the conversation. The book is My Alaska by Nancy Lee. You'll find it at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, usual places, yourlinkpublishing.com as well. Link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. As I'm reading this, you really tell a wonderful story. And I'm thinking, are you a story writer or a teller? Is there a difference between the two? Yes, I'm not a writer. I am, and I apologize for that. I'm more of a storyteller. Um, when I when I when this book started, I um, had to drive an hour and a half um, to get to a real grocery store or the bank. So... I used that time to um, dictate the book and the stories. Um, I thought, well, why not? I've got time. And I uh, grabbed my dad's little dictaphone and I dictated the stories. So they weren't really truly written. Um, And that's how it started. And from there, my mom got them transcribed. And the lady that was... um, uh, doing the typing was laughing so hard. Everyone in the <laughs> office was coming by and saying, "What? what's so funny? <laughs> and she finally got it done. She told my mom, she said, oh, your daughter's got the gift. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, that's what happened. And then the book sat for like 30 years because I didn't know what to do with it. And it just kind of collected dust, and um, that's kind of how it got started. Fortunately, it's available today. You'll really enjoy reading Nancy's story. The book is My Alaska, again, available wherever books are sold. Of course, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, publisher, you are linkpublishing.com. The fun times are in there. You also had times, and I guess I have to ask you, why are you still alive? How can you still be alive with what you went through? You were on death's doorstep literally on numerous occasions, weren't you? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, only by the grace of God. That's the only reason I have to tell you. Um, I went through bear country without a weapon, without any care to get to a um, glacial uh, ice flow to ski in the summers. Um, We would uh, take our skis in a big um, coffee can with rocks in it and make lots of noise and 
troop like um, like three fourths of a mile through bear country to get to this glacial ice field and and um I no one could pay me as an adult now to do that. I was 16 years old. I was in, uh, you yes. know a teenager, and no, nothing goes wrong when you're a teenager. Exactly. Exactly. We laugh and and you know make noise, and I never saw a bear. I uh, I I can't explain why, but because um, we were an hour either direction from even a phone if something had gone wrong. Um, it would have been over. And um, it was an ice field that a man had been skiing on and he went head first into a crevasse and died. Um, but we were fine. We were, <laughs> we were fine. And, um, and then the sea lions, um, we went kayaking in uh, Halibut Cove in um, uh, Homer, Alaska. And, uh, these three sea lions came up one at a time by my kayak and I was just in heaven. I thought this is the coolest thing. And I was giggling and laughing. And my partner was like hugging the, the shoreline, you know, she was, she oh, was yes. petrified and I was just giggling and I was <laughs> in heaven. These things I could reach out and touch them if I had wanted to, they were that close. And so on board the Danny Jays, the little um, ferry that took us over there, the captain looked at the kayaks and said, yeah, um, sea lions travel in packs of three and they tip over the kayaks and drown the kayakers and eat them. Ooh. And I, <laughs> okay, I don't like either of those scenarios there, the uh, tipping over or the, uh, the eating part. No, but they were right there, and there was no reason. I was looking into the eyes of the, there was a male and two females, and he was about eight to 900 pounds, and I was looking right into his eyes, just loving every minute of it, and he just went under and went away, and the females followed him in the order they had arrived, and I don't know why he changed his mind. There was, it was just miraculous <laughs> that I lived. Yeah. One of yeah. the many stories you'll find in Nancy Lee's book, it's called my Alaska book available wherever books are sold. And you realize that the, besides the beauty we see there, you've got what bear, moose, caribou, wolves, that's part of ordinary everyday life there. Apparently. Oh, yes. Oh yes, um, there the um, moose come down in the winter from the mountain because the snow gets too high. So there's moose everywhere in the winter. Um, you see all kinds of animals. Um, Twenty minutes outside of Anchorage, which is the largest city in Alaska, um, there's bears. There's um, any kind of animal you want. Um, there's uh, my brother was hiking one time and above the uh, Kenai Peninsula there, and he was looking for beluga whales in the Kenai, and uh, he sat down to eat lunch and he he felt someone watching him and he was a little uncomfortable and he looked up and behind him was this big mountain goat, this big white mountain goat, <laughs> and he was just watching him eat his lunch. <laughs> It's a wild place. It's it's very wild. Yeah. <laughs> the book My Alaska by Nancy <laughs> Lee. And I mentioned in the beginning with some people, especially after reading the stories, hearing the stories, will go, no, these can't all be true. These are based on true incidents, correct? Oh, they're all true. And I've had people tell me they don't believe them because they're so... Um, they are miraculous. I shouldn't have lived through most of them. And um, here I am. And uh, I thank God. And I, I, you know, it's, uh, it's an amazing life we live in. Alaska just affords so many crazy adventures. Um, when you get out into it and out into the wild and the wilderness, it's, it's just it's another experience. It's, it's so, um, I don't, I'm look. I'm searching for the word. It's so, um, 
Well, you you bring it to life. You make us feel like like we're there. And I mentioned uh, the beauty of Alaska that we see on, on some of the television programs. I guess that doesn't do it full justice. You do because you show us the other side of that. You show us the part of Alaska that really makes it Alaska. Yeah, it's um it's the most beautiful place in the summer, and it's beautiful in the winter too. But it's it's darn cold and it's dark. <laughs> very dark well yeah darn cold and dark and that pretty well sums it up and that's the one time of year i I would not want to be there i mentioned in the beginning therefore the earthquake and i'm going to use a capital t with the earthquake this is 1964 good friday a 9.2 earthquake they don't register that much higher than the 9.2 talk about that in your memories of going through that yeah, I was uh, seven years old, and I was on roller skates when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was in the basement of my house with my girlfriend, and um, the first thing I remember is the TV um, started walking out from the wall. Like, it just started walking, and pretty soon it unplugged, and my friend said, it must be an earthquake. And at that second, Um, We were transported somehow to uh, sitting down and we, our backs were to a padded bar that my parents had in the basement. And it was the only place in that room that was safe because all the glass that was um, behind us was shattered and just covered the room with shrapnel. And um, I remember the, floor there was a tile floor and it went in waves and the tiles were popping off as it went and and it got kind of dark all we could see was the lights from the window the, there was a little basement window and it was enough light to see and um that was the fault line the major fault line of the whole city it ran under our house And um, in the meantime, a third of the city was falling into the ocean. Um, And our house had just enough sand in it to keep the mud from dumping our house over. And um, then I remember there was a, it quieted, it stopped for a second. And I could hear my mom's voice and I could hear the fear in it. She was is screaming for me <clears throat> and i um ran across the room and my girlfriend ran up to the steps to get upstairs and the earthquake started again and it was so powerful it was just knocking us from side to side on the steps you know on the railing and yes. to the wall and we were just laughing it was like a carnival ride you know <laughs> it, was just, it was fun for us yes um, and I got upstairs, and uh, then my brother Jim came. He had been in the kitchen, and I remember him saying that he saw the whole inlet that came in in Anchorage there. The ocean was called the Cook Inlet, um, empty out and flow back in. And um, he had heard his ribs um, in the kitchen, And by that time, uh, Lisa, my friend, uh, her dad had come walking up to get her and, you know, to make sure she was okay and take her home. And then we just kind of grouped up. Our our chimney had fallen out of the living room, just completely fallen out. And there was a big gaping hole in the wall. Everything had fallen out in the kitchen into the middle of the floor, all our mustard, all our ketchup, everything in the fridge. The house was just in total disarray. My father was a doctor and he was at the hospital taking care of people. It's amazing more people didn't die. It it was totally amazing. It sounds like yeah. it, as you're going through that, and you were seven at the time, it sounds like it happened a week ago, you were able to recount you know, all of everything that had happened. What was life life like afterwards, trying to, to get through all the rubbish, the destruction, and being concerned about aftershocks? Well, um, there were a lot of aftershocks. Um, and one in particular was, was um, 
uh, it was a real emotional writing that I didn't think I had any problems with the earthquake because I was seven. And I thought, oh, I re- was a resilient kid. But when I started writing it, it, it started, the trauma started coming out. And it was really cathartic going back and revisiting it. Yes. Um, we had one big aftershock the next day. My older brother had come home with his friend. They were in Turnigan, which fell into the sea. Um, and he, they were wrestling, and there was a, a big aftershock. And we all ran around the house and out the front door, and my mother was standing at the front door and uh, talking to a um, contractor about the house because we had to move it. They condemned it and said that it has to be gone in two weeks. And um, so the kids, you know, went down, ran down the front steps and out onto the lawn, which we were told to do. And when I got to the top step, just this thought came in my head, I'm going to jump as far as I can. And so from the top step, I jumped just as hard as I could. And I didn't know it, but as I jumped, the bottom step opened up um, with a crevasse. And it was, I don't know how big it was, but it, it, it was a big crevasse. I would have run into it and fallen in it had I got down the steps. And it opened up just as I jumped over it, and then it closed back up. It was like it wanted me. <laughs> yes. I I would have run into it, and it would have crushed me. And my mother saw that from on top of the steps. And when we all as kids went back in, I didn't know what had happened. And I just, she was white, just white as a sheet. And I looked at her and I said, oh, don't worry, Mom, it's just an earthquake. <laughs> and I went off and ran off. And, and uh, you know, the next, the, that afternoon, the contractor showed me the line in the contract in the cement yes. that had opened up. And he was trying to explain to me what had happened. And it was a few years later, my mom told me about it. And I understood what really had happened. And. And um, it was just God watching out again. Well, another brush with death. I mentioned on death doorsteps, literally in this case, the, the porch steps, the, the steps to the house that uh, were yeah. uh, precarious yeah. in, in this situation. Nancy Lee, our guest on the program, going by so quickly. I want to talk about and sort of use that as the jumping off point. Were there difficult chapters to write in the book that brought back memories? And again, the memory you had of the earthquake is is different than than probably what you thought it was going to be as you were recollecting that. Yeah, we lost um, my big brother in an airplane crash. He um, in near Sitka. He and his best friend Clark Greening were doing a, a fishing lodge. Clark and Melinda. Um, we're doing a fishing lodge together in Sitka, Alaska, and um, they had a choice of taking a, a ferry that would take three days or flying that would take like, you know, an hour and 15 minutes. And um, John hated planes. He said, Nancy, I will never put my whole family on a plane. He hated them, the small planes. And um so I don't know how Dina, his wife, talked them into getting on that plane, but she was six months pregnant, and uh, the plane went over um, a pass, and in Alaska, you get a lot of clear air turbulence, oh, yes. it's called, and um, if you're not high enough or or lucky enough, um, the the turbulence will um, slam you into the pass or slam you down. Um, this turbulence flipped the airplane upside down and slammed it down. And everyone on the plane perished. And, um, John was 33 and Dina was, she was younger than him. And she was just, uh, I mean, just the most wonderful person on earth. She was just 
happy and everybody loved her. She loved everybody. This was their second child. They had lost their first one um, to stillbirth. And, um, you know, she was six months pregnant. It was yes. just all around such a tragedy. And here they were. They were so happy. My parents had just visited them two weeks earlier, caught halibut. There were huge halibut in this cove where they were doing this fishing lodge, and they were just having the best time. And um, it it that was, oh, it was so hard to revisit. It was so hard. Well, I can imagine um, I the, the pain is, yes, as you go through and you, you, you miss your brother and his wife and the family and oh. what was going to be the, you know, expanded family. In, you're a pilot, a licensed pilot. The cover of the, uh, uh, the book shows you uh, in an air, air um, uh, uh, transport. A beautiful cover in the, in the book, by the way. The book is My Alaska, Nancy Lee, our guest on the program. Did that affect your flying, going through that with your brother and the, and the unfortunate end of that flight? Um, actually, the <clears throat> the cover is Chalkeetna Air Taxi. Yes. Um, they, they were going to rescue some climbers um, from the Cahilna base camp that had been weathered in for nine days after a climb and they were out of food. Um, that wasn't me, <laughs> but, um, but it could have been, you, <laughs> yeah, but, it, but it could have been, it could have been, you could have said, yeah, that's me. I'm the one, in the, one behind the wheel yeah. and I'm, I, I'm waving, but it, it shows you the terrain there and how treacherous I'm sure oh, that yeah. that could be. Did your brother's accident have an impact on, on your flying? No, it really didn't. Um, because I don't, I'm kind of a baby pilot. I don't fly a lot of passes and I don't fly a lot of, uh, big mountain terrain. Um, because of that reason, I know, I know what the consequences are and yes. you have to really have your stuff together, have a lot of hours. Um, the, the pilots that fly Mount McKinley are seasoned pilots. They, they know their stuff. Um, and for the most part, they know you have to have a lot of airspace going over those passes because they slam you 1,500 feet. Um, you know, that's normal going wow. over those sometimes. And, and that has been the cause of many um, crashes on the mountain. Um, you know, from pilots yes. that just weren't weren't careful or didn't have the, the altitude. Um, but most pilots are, you know, very careful and they don't fly the big passes often. Yes. Um, Boy, fascinating stories. So many of these are in uh, Nancy's book, which is called My Alaska by Nancy Lee. Book is available wherever books are sold. Time going by so quickly. A couple more questions here. I just got to ask about the glacier ice fields and, and skiing on those. Just saying that, skiing on the glacier ice, ice fields <laughs> has a dangerous ring to it. Uh, was oh, it? it does. Yeah. Of course, you were probably 16 at the time, and you, and you didn't care. But how dangerous is it actually to ski on the uh, the ice fields? Well, um, it, it it's very dangerous. Uh, where we were, I, there were no big crevasses or, uh, you know, but I didn't think to look for any. I, I It never occurred to me. The article I read in Reader's Digest, I read many, many years later, and it just uh, took me back. It was like, whoa, I never considered that. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, you know, I was, you're kind of dumb at 16. You're just kind of dumb. Um, but, but a bear could have run up and got us. I mean, we could have fallen and gotten hurt. We could have, I mean, there were so many things that could have gone wrong. But that was part of the exhilaration and fun of it. 
I was just going to say that was part of the, the growing up there. If you were concerned about all of these and never left the house, well, there wouldn't be any oh, book, no. My Alaska, and you wouldn't have great stories, and life would be totally different. I mean, this really was an enriching part of your life, it, it, the life-threatening, but an enriching part of your life as well, wasn't it? Oh, exactly. It was all an adventure. It was all fun. And um, it was, you know, if it didn't have a spark of danger to it, it it wasn't, you know, it wasn't fun. So, you know, the things you do in Alaska have that, that spark of danger to them. And, and, you know, the, uh, they're, they, they're not dangerous enough that you're going to die for certain, you know, like, like I see the base jumpers, they scare me to death. Um, that's too much for me. You know, <laughs> but um, but kind of you know it's it's kind of safe. It's pretty pretty safe. Well, it is because you're here talking about it. You're able to write the book, and you're here to talk about it and have some some laughs as you look back on all that you did uh, during your early days in Alaska. It's a look at the real Alaska back in the uh, the 1980s. Before that, uh, what, uh, stories on the earthquake in, in 1964. Just amazing that you were were able to survive that and all of the experiences you went through. That Nancy brings to life in a very colorful way in her book, My Alaska. The book is available wherever books are sold. Of course, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, the publisher, youarelinkpublishing.com. Nancy, the time has gone by way too quickly. It's been a fun blast having you with us on the program. Are you working on another book now? Thanks, Rick. Um, I have so many more stories. Oh, so good. many more. That was the answer I was looking for. That's good. And do them from your uh, preteen years when you had no fear. Those are great stories. So love to, have you, love to have you back to talk about that. Good luck with that. And congratulations on the success of a wonderful book, My Alaska by Nancy Lee. Information on our website this week at America.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again, thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.